mal kurz weg. So, Gabe wird uns jetzt natürlich eine äh, Portion von Star Wars The Old Republic zeigen. Gabe, take it away. All right. So we're excited here today to show the first time ever at Gamescom live gameplay from our higher level content, specifically the Eternity Bowl. The Eternity Bowl is an operation. Operations are where 8 to 16 players can get together to face off with the greatest threats in the galaxy. Now, operations can cater towards the casual player or the hardcore player because it has varying difficulty modes for accessibility and challenge. So, we're going to start here on the Viking Spaceport. We have the eight players right here. They're going to face, face the challenges ahead. And we have one party right now, four players. They're about to get their mission debriefing on the Viking Spaceport. Now, the Viking Spaceport's where you can access most operations and flashpoints in the game. So, it looks like we have three players up there out of four. The Power Tech, the Bounty Hunter Power Tech must be AFK or he's dragging behind. Well, no need to worry. We can hollow conference him in. Now, hollow conferencing works well when you have multi-group conversations or multiplayer conversations, and one of the players aren't there. You can hollow conference them in from anywhere. Also, nochmal zur Übersetzung: Falls ihr in einem der Story-Dialoge seid und einer eurer Kollegen ist gerade irgendwo anders auf der Toilette oder gerade beim Creepen oder sonst irgendwas könnt ihr ohne Probleme ein Hologramm von ihm erzeugen und damit den Dialog weiterführen. I don't forgive the lack of protocol, but war has broken the chain of command. My purpose is grave. I am General Thronault, commanding officer of the Imperial Reclamation Service. I understand you're familiar with us. What a bunch of useless sex of skin. The Empire needs us. Of that I'm certain. And right now, I need you. We uncovered a new section of Balsavis prison during a bombing run. It's been sealed for 20,000 years. No exit to the surface. It's alien builders, the Rikata, called it the Eternity Vault. It's where they kept the prisoners and technology they could never afford to release. I don't think I'm going to like this. We've been translating the Rakata inscriptions. Most are indecipherable, but a few refer to a prisoner called the Inferno One. We've seen the title before in the dead corals of Rugosa and the Sias of this. We thought it a myth that Rakata warlords had bled and enslaved a thousand planets. Getting a little nervous. I've known fear before, and I know it today. Any sane man would. The legends say it took an army to stop the Infernal One before the Rikata and the other ancients locked him away with his weapons. If we don't do anything, though, well, the war against the Republic may be nothing next to what'll come. I won't fail, I promise. Do the Empire proud. The Eternity Vault is yours to enter. General, the shuttle is ready. We can fly to the Eternity Vault as soon as your team is prepped. So that was one of our multiplayer conversations. Very sort of traditional tabletop RPG where everyone in the party can choose an option and then they roll up against each other to see who responds. Now, of course, like I said, the operations are going to take eight players, and this is only four. So they need to find four more players. And lo and behold, conveniently, there are four more players here. So the party leader is going to convert from a party to an operations group, and he's going to invite those four more players. And as soon as he does, they'll be able to get aboard their Terminus class destroyer to embark towards the Belsavis, the prison planet. Now, as the mission debriefing said, on this prison planet, there was a conflict between the Empire and the Republic, and they inadvertently bombed and opened up what was called the Eternity Bolt, an ancient alien prison. So, and I think now it's going to, the action is going to start, right? So in the approach, the Eternity Bolt's defenses shot the ship down, and they're forced to take escape pods to the surface. Now let me remind you, 
this is live gameplay they're playing right now, and it's going to take co-op to, to, to get through the challenges ahead. So really, anything can happen. They practice a little bit, but we'll see how far they make it. Also, wir sehen schon, diese Rettungskapseln sind nicht einfach nur Ladebildschirme, sondern sind echte Fahrzeuge, wo man von Anfang bis Ende verfolgen kann, wie sie im Schiff starten und letztendlich am Planeten ankommen. Alright, so they've landed across the surface. No! Oh, the Tauntaun. Again. That's not the combat I was talking about, but it's coming up. They've landed across the surface and they're all meeting here. Now the Juggernaut, he's leading the charge. This guy is heavily armored, and he uses, he's got a lightsaber in one hand, and he uses the other hand to deflect damage. He's very Darth Vader inspired. His job, they've hit the first line of defense here, there's two turrets and a lot of droids. His job is going to be to keep most of the damage focused on him. Now of course, he's doing a good job there with it, but he can't weather that onslaught forever. Nearby we have an aging operative acting as medic, applying some med packs from a distance. But of course those turrets are firing anyone they please. And so the Inquisitor over here is numbing the rest of the party's mind to the pain and offering up some force shields to help them out with that. Now with the bounty hunters, they jump right in and they're trying to take out this turret as fast as possible. We have a power tech bounty hunter here. He's an advanced prototype. He's much like Jacob Fett. He's got a bag of tricks. He can use a grappling hood. He can use a jet pack to get in the range. He can plant EMPs. And then the other bounty hunter we have there is Mercenary Spec. She's all about doing bursts of damage and unloading. And she's doing the Death from Above iconic Boba Fett move, attacking the vulnerable points. And of course the Sorcerer can help out with some Force Lightning. You see the durability of the turret right above it, and it's down. Good job, team. All right. Now that they've lowered the amount of damage in this encounter, they can shift some of their resources from offense, or from defense rather, to offense to get ahead of these droids that keep landing. The Sith Assassin's helping out the Juggernaut here occupy them. He's very much like Dark Ball. He can occupy a lot of enemies and avoid all of their attacks. He can also use force pulls to try to get them into position. And when they're tightly packed, that's a good opportunity for the agent to radio in an airstrike, as he's doing right there. He's painted the target, and it will be landed. There it is. And of course, the Sith Sorcerer can help out with a Force Storm if he didn't get interrupted. He got interrupted there. There it goes. Good job. All right. So the teams take care of most of the droids. It's time to move on to the second turn. Now the broader over there is a lethal damage dealer, wielding in both hands, can force lead, and can also throw her saber to finish it off. And it looks like she's been doing a good job on that and finished it off. All right. So that was the first line of defense. Here comes the second. XRR3. He was formerly used by some of the Emperor One to wipe out civilizations, but then so was captors reprogrammed him to help contain the return evil. Now the Juggernaut jumped right into the mix there. As you can see, he packs a punch. They're gonna have to look out for his feet. Now he's channeling missiles. There's two ways the team can deal with this. They can either run for cover or they can group up, and it looks like they're running for cover. All right, appropriately so. You see the Assassin and Juggernaut are out there because they each have their own ways of dealing with damage. The Juggernaut can take it, the Assassin can avoid it. Operative's getting brave and giving a, uh, a key med pack there. We got Death from Above going on again. Now you might notice he's overheated, so now's a good time for the team to move in and try to get some damage done. All right, but Annihilation Point is back in action. Now he's got two arms, of course. One arm, though, is on one target, the other arm's on another target. The main cannon is focused on the Juggernaut or the Assassin, and his other hand, the missile battery, is hitting another random party member. And that party member can be um, identified by a red targeting reticle on them. Everyone's going to want to stay clear of that party member. Alright, this time the team is going to move up. The operative is going to drop a Colton pack in the center and it's going to radiate out some recovery. So it's another way they can deal with it is concentrating their defense together. 
still doing a significant amount of damage. All right, the overheat's happening again. Good time to take advantage of that, do some damage. Now the Marauder is really good at finding and exposing the weaknesses on his enemies. You can see the Marauder is moving around the back at different points, and they're getting bonuses for that. But currently, he's got his eyes set on him, and you'll see his arm will turn around and hit the Marauder. There it goes. So what heals on the Marauder. All right. All right, we've got it to score protocol phase here. He's shooting, Kylie's Detroit's shooting missiles off his back and he's landing all over the ground. The players have got to move around to dodge it. Looks like they've done that effectively. Juggernaut needs to bring his attention again. Good job, Juggernaut. See what happens? Now the splash damage is going to hit the operative. You don't want to be there. I'm good. <laughs> Watch out next time, Sorcerer. Offered him to shoot him away, nice. Alright, your resources are running a little thin. You're going to want to take cover this time. We see the sword medic, he's out of resources here. On this side, you see the operations, all their status of each of the different party members. Juggernaut and assassin still being brave. I guess you had some of the force to play.